Welcome to the Cannabis 101 podcast, your guide through the legalization and consumption of cannabis in Canada and beyond. Here's your host, Dean Millard. Hello there and welcome to episode 70, hour two of the Cannabis 101 podcast. My name is Dean Millard and good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Depending on what time you're listening and watching this, uh, we appreciate it if you are watching it on our YouTube channel or maybe you're catching it on one of our social media streams. Uh, The big thing for us here on this show, if you're just joining us for the first time, is that it's not just about getting high. It's about getting healthy. There are a lot of really cool things about the plant that can be beneficial to you or maybe a loved one or just a great friend. So there's also one way we sort of kick things off on this show, and that's finding out what's your groove. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. You dig it! Kinda grabs you by the boo boo, don't it? Pipe in a grape, long in a blitz. This is great! This is the bee's knees! Can you dig it? So when I say what's your groove, uh, I'm asking that if you're going with something, if you're grooving on something while you're listening or watching this show, I would love to hear it. Uh, Maybe you've got some nice CBD. Maybe you had an edible. Pipe and a crepe. Bong and a blintz. I'm not really sure. Uh, I have the uh, supernova firing up. That's what I call the uh, volcano hybrid that I have. Gold member is uh, what I call the uh, classic gold edition that I have. I love gold! About going with the old uh, Supernova today, and in it, I have some lemon skunk from DNA Genetics. It's peppery. It's citrus. It's like eating some lemon pepper wings, maybe. If you're digging that. I love uh, the combination, the taste. And, uh, yeah... I got a uh, big old bag of uh, lemon skunk DNA that I fired up in the supernova. So let me get my groove on. All right, that was nice. That was very, very nice. Okay, now that I have my groove, you have your groove. Let's find out what's coming down The hash pipe on this show. Earl Oliver is going to join us. This guy has a wild backstory in in how he basically took over a cannabis company and is now producing some great stuff under Gnome Star Craft Cannabis. Uh, So we'll give you an introduction to Earl, and it was a really fun conversation, show you a little bit about what they are doing out on the West Coast. Chris Ionson, of course, is our educator. He is the manager of Nova Cannabis, Jasper F., Hence the name Supernova. Uh, I picked up my Volcano Hybrid at Nova Cannabis using the click and collect method from my buddy Chris, and that's why I named it Supernova. Anyway, he's our educator on what's that strain. Uh, The cultivar we're doing is the Royal Goddess from Royal City Cannabis. Uh, Looking forward to that discussion, bringing it to you, uh, and you're not going to believe the size of the bud uh, that we had uh, oh, man, it was so huge. Uh, our cannabis question is about why you got into the industry, uh, what pairs well with cannabis will be coming up, and our cannabis character uh, is a uh, South Park character. I also want to tell you about the uh, Weed Weekly. It comes out every Friday right to your inbox with all the stuff from this past week's show and a whole bunch of fun other cool things. We also have a giveaway every week on Fridays, uh, and I try to get it to come out at 420 if I can. That's not always possible, but all you do is head to the cannabis101podcast.ca, hit subscribe, boom, you're in the mix to get the Weed Weekly in your inbox every Friday and also get in on our uh, weekly prize package. 
So there you go. Keep up to date with, uh, hopefully, uh, one of your uh, favorite uh, podcasts. Uh, we'll get to the details on that uh, as we go. But our cannabis question today, well, it's time for that now. It's prize time. Chime in on the cannabis question. Okay. And you could win a Cannabis 101 podcast prize pack. Pipe in a grape, bong in a blint. Hit us up on any of our social media feeds or email us at Cannabis101podcast at gmail.com. Okay, here we go. So this week I'm uh, reaching out to all the fine folks that listen or watch to the, watch this show who are in the cannabis industry. And if you chime in, just for chiming in, you can win a Cannabis 101 podcast prize pack. And if you're not in the cannabis industry, but you would like to be, tell me why. So the question is, why did you join the cannabis industry? And if you haven't, but you'd like to, why would you? So just for chiming in, you could win a Cannabis 101 podcast prize pack. The ways to get in touch with us on Twitter, at the Cannabis 101. Facebook and Instagram, Cannabis 101 podcast. And you can also email Cannabis 101 podcast at gmail.com. You can remain anonymous or not. It's up to you. And you can still get in on the mix. For me... The reason I uh, am in the cannabis industry, well, it, it, I was in the sports media industry um, on talk radio, and Bell Media made their cutbacks, uh, so I looked into podcasting, and one of the first things I wanted to podcast about was cannabis. Uh, so I guess the, the I'm in it uh, because I wanted to learn more about cannabis, and, and man, have I ever. Uh, just learning something new every show, so it's so wonderful, so education and then it kind of turned into um, you know a, a second broadcast career and things like that so that's the reason i have decided to get into the cannabis industry uh in the the cannabis media space tell me what industry you're in as part of the can what uh, part of the cannabis industry you're in and why you decided to get into it and we can get you a uh, prize package as for what pairs well with cannabis well, that is watching the L.A. Dodgers win the World Series. I became a Dodger fan in 1988 when Kirk Gibson hit his legendary home run in the Game 1, ninth inning off Dennis Eckersley coming off the bench. Maybe the greatest sports moment for me. That's when I became a Dodgers fan. And I had to wait 32 years for them to win another World Series. It's the first time I was able to celebrate as an adult. And I did with a giant joint topped off with a whole lot of keef that I've collected. And man, did I have a good night celebrating last night. So what pairs well with cannabis for me is watching uh, the Dodgers and celebrating. We can celebrate now without booze. Wow, what a mind-blowing thing. We can celebrate with cannabis in a new spectacular way healthier way not saying smoking is healthy but there are certainly lots of ways uh, to consume cannabis on that front so that's what i think pairs well with cannabis and i'd love to hear from you what do you pair well with cannabis uh, certainly hit me up in uh, any of the ways uh, that we have you can get us uh, on social media cannabis 101 on twitter cannabis 101 podcast and on facebook and Instagram, and you can also uh, email us, cannabis101podcast at gmail.com. And make sure you check out uh, cannabis101podcast.ca for past episodes and more. All right, Earl Oliver from Gnome Star Craft Cannabis is going to join us in just a second after we hear the weed song from the artist My Dead Dog. <laughs> Some 
Cannabis 101 podcast, your guide through the legalization and consumption of cannabis in Canada and beyond. Very pleased to uh, welcome to the program from Gnome Star Craft Cannabis, Earl Oliver is joining me. Earl, thanks so much for being a part of the show today. How are you? Thank you for having me. I'm great. Excellent. Uh, this is a conversation that I've been looking forward to ever since we first chatted on the uh, the phone. Um, and I want to get into your uh, what you guys are doing at uh, Gnome Star Craft Cannabis because it really looks cool. But first, I start with a question that I ask everybody. And what did okay. you do before you entered the legal cannabis world? I always like to find out people's backstories. So tell us what you did before I'm, you got into cannabis. Well, I'm a, a PhD in computer science. I, um, I designed and built uh, systems to uh, circumvent um, internet censorship in countries like um, Iran and China, Saudi Arabia, that um, you know, have the capability of controlling how, how people access the internet. In China, for example, it's the Great Firewall of China. So um, the work I did was essentially exploiting the, the vast amount of untapped wireless capacity between uh, people's mobile devices to build a, a totally disconnected, disconnected from the internet content distribution network. So imagine, you know, for example, in Saudi Arabia, uh, a, a gay blogger um, wants to disseminate their 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 blog, their story, their their right. news. Um, they could just you know compose it on their mobile device, and then um, by establishing these opportunistic wireless connections with other devices, they can disseminate their their content to shared trusted. Um, uh, parties. Hmm. And uh, so, yeah, I did that. And I got a PhD from Waterloo. And then, um, and then I started a, a, a tech startup with a, a friend in, uh, in LA, uh, building a system to, to uh, do large scale focus groups. So this, the, the company was called Vote Blast. It's, uh, I got a few patents from that. But uh, I mean, the company has sort of gone, gone under it's, uh, it's really hard. It was a hard, it's a hard business. Mm -hmm. We, um, you know, we were really pushing to get into the presidential uh, debates, and we did do some large-scale focus groups where people would sit there in the audience, uh, you know, rating, sort of doing like live polling. Um, that was that was fun, but uh, ultimately, uh, ultimately, it went under. And um, yeah, and then in the beginning of uh, 2017, I uh, I I can't stand Trump, and I did not. Mm -hmm. I was living in Silicon Valley, and uh, just the thought of paying tax to the to the U.S. federal government just makes me sick. So uh, yeah, I left. I uh, put all my stuff in storage in California and came up to, to Vancouver. And I, I had invested in this uh, this cannabis company, Votus Pharmaceuticals. Um, and I figured, well, you know, this is a this is an entity that I could start getting into agritech. Um, and I pitched them a project where I was um, studying the Washington State uh, recreational market because they were every every month Washington State would essentially provide. Uh, a downloadable database of all the sales, all the transactions in the state, um, everything. So from every processor sold to a, or every cultivator sold to a processor and sold to a retail and then all the retail level transactions, you could download all of that. It's about a 15 gigabyte uh, monthly download. Hmm. And um, and I was starting to sort of figure out how can how can this company who has a, had an operation in Washington op optimize their, their sales. And uh, that was really what brought me in. I was, I was really, tired of the US and looking for a project. And um, I've always liked agri ag agricultural technology and sort of uh, the nice thing about cannabis is that it's a, it's a cash crop. It's, uh, you know, it, you can justify spending, spending, you know, a few thousand dollars on, you know, Raspberry Pis and a sensor network to actually, uh, you know, build stuff. So um, yeah, that's what, that's what dragged me in. And uh, just, I was just an investor. I didn't, you know, I didn't, I barely consumed cannabis. I. Uh, I was definitely cannabis friendly at that point, mm -hmm. uh, having invested in other companies, and um, yeah, that's, that's what got me in. Uh, well, it's a, it's a wild story of what happened after. So <laughs> you get attracted to the cannabis industry, you get involved yeah. in the cannabis industry as an investor, and then yeah. it seems like uh, kind of the you know what hit the fan. Yeah. So uh, you know the, the company that I invested in, uh, you know, they had applied for their Health Canada license. And in uh, November 2013, and they got their ready to build letter uh, under the MMPR in January 2014. 
So by by late 2016, early 2017, I figured, well, these these guys must be, they must be almost there. And uh, like many investors, you know, I, I jumped in. I figured, well, they're going to get their license pretty soon. They've been waiting a while. And then um, now I came up to Vancouver, sort of, you know, met the team. And I, I went back to Ontario where my, my friends and family all live. And, um, and then it was like sort of like August. I started asking like, you know, where the hell is the license? Like what, you know, what did I invest in? I had about $300,000 invested in the company. And, and, uh, and I found out, you know, the CEO was like, off gallivanting through Bulgaria with his, you know, with his new girlfriend. I'm oh. like, what the hell? You know, what the hell? Like, you know, <laughs> I invested in this company and what are you doing to get the license? So it was obvious um, at that point that this company had no capacity to get a license in Canada. Just no, no one with the skill to do it. And uh, I said, well, you know, hey, I'll do it. Like I'm, you know, I'm used to reading software specs. Like I can read the cat or the, the ACMPR which, which had come into effect. And uh, I, I just said, like, I'll do it. Like, and I started reading all the SOPs for this company and, um, you know, really started getting my, my head around the, the process of regulated cannabis production. And, uh, you know, I figured it would just be, a, you know, be a few months of work. It, you know, I talked to Health Canada and get this, get this thing, you know, sorted out. You know, so finally they'd have someone to talk to and uh, talking to Health Canada, is, it's just like you're, you're emailing a black hole um, at the time. They've improved radically since then. But it wasn't until March of 2018 that um, Health Canada finally got back to the company and said, uh, you know, like, you know, we're looking at your application, please submit. And the, the email is so like formal, please submit a full application under the ACMPR. We, we had seven days to do it. So I flew out to, to Delta, I, I lived in Ontario. And within one week, I turned around a 200 page application under the ACMPR for the company. And um, got that back. And then summer of 2018, they finally, Health Canada finally came back to us and said, you've entered the confirmation of readiness stage. And this company, you know, it had taken so long to get ready that, you know, the facility had been built under the MMPR uh, requirements. We had a great big vault and uh, GPP didn't exist in you know, good production practices. Mm -hmm. So uh, suddenly it was like, you know, we had to like renovate the place and get everything ready. And the, you know, the security stuff wasn't, wasn't built out properly. And it was a, it was quite a, quite an undertaking to renovate this place. And that went on until about November of 2018, when we submitted the evidence package. Um, and then, uh, then we waited, we waited for uh, uh, about four months. Uh, in the meantime, the, the former CEO quit. Um, <laughs> there's, a, there's, there's some there's some there's some Game of Thrones uh, politicking there. Wow. But, uh, you know, basically, as a you know, as a shareholder, I, I demand, I, I demand results and, uh, there's no room on the team for people that, you know, just don't, don't work. So, you know, I was basically fighting all these people. I forced out one director and this former CEO quit. And, um, yeah, I basically, um, you know, I, like I was doing all the work. I sort of made this company, my baby over time. Uh, and then April, 2019, uh, I came back to Vancouver to really, you know, take the bull by the horns and get this thing done, and uh, yeah, we got, you know, we got multiple RMIs uh, requests from RFIs, requests for more information from Health Canada, and um, I worked through that throughout 2019, and uh, it's a real process with Health Canada. They, uh, they're sometimes they're difficult to deal with, and um, and then in January 2000, 2020, we finally got licensed. Wow, that is uh... yeah. Yeah. It, it's just a wild ride, you know. The 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 whole Game of Thrones politics going on behind there sounds yeah. like it was a a crazy place to be at. But you, you know, you you've certainly <laughs> leveled out now, and 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 now you have yeah. Gnome Star Craft Cannabis. So tell tell us what that looks like. You know, location, size. You know what you guys uh, what you guys want to be. Uh, <laughs> I want to survive. <laughs> <laughs> So we are, uh, yeah, we're a 12,000 square foot facility. Um, so we are, we're currently a standard, uh, a standard cu cultivator, um, you know, as opposed to a micro, but we are the currently that we have the production size of a micro. So we have two, two 1,000 square foot, you know, 42 light rooms that, um, and then five more rooms to build out. So as the, as the, you know, as the money starts coming in, we'll be building out additional grow rooms, um, 
and, and, and another room for doing like processing, like mm -hmm. trimming and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, right now we're just focused on getting that, getting that flywheel of revenue coming in and, you know, building a brand that, you know, consumers can trust. Um, you know, we are pretty fortunate in our, um, like we, our first crop was basically just like, you know, experimental and it was terrible sure. as PM and we just, you know, it's basically all garbage. But um, our, our first go to market crop with the, the cultivars you have listed on the screen there, that was our, yeah, that's our first one. And, uh, you know, Mike and I, Mike, Mike is our master grower. We, uh, we really, uh, we knew this is going to be like a make or break crop. Like literally if we didn't, if we didn't deliver on this crop and not just deliver, but, uh, you know, like we can't come out of the gate with mids. We need to come out of the gate at the top of the market to get top pricing and build a, build a brand that consumers want to, uh, you know, want to support. And, uh, yeah, we, we did it. And I tell awesome. you, it wasn't, it wasn't easy. It yeah, was no. fucking hard. Hey, it sounds <laughs> like, uh, it's been a, a crazy process for sure. Uh, what is your growing process? Like, uh, how do you guys grow? Uh, so we, we're sort of still in experimental mode. We, we, uh, the, the three that we went to market with were growing in cocoa, um, <clears throat> you know, in 20, 20 liter pots. Uh, with all high pressure sodium lighting, we've got uh, lots of cooling, lots of dehumidification. And, um, you know, we really keep our VPD dialed in. Uh, we, we feed them Ramo nutrients uh, exclusively. Um, and then in our in our second go to market crop that we're actually literally harvesting today in the last two days, we did we grew that one in soil. So our goal is to basically, uh, as the market matures, uh, it becomes more about terpenes rather than like terpenes and the experience, the overall sort of, you know, cons consumption experience rather than just what's the THC number. So, you know, we want, we want the richest terpene profile, like the best nose, the best experience. And, uh, you know, a lot of the cannabis I've, I, I consume a wide, a wide range of cannabis. Some of the best stuff that I've consumed has been grown in living soil. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I've never done soil tests and like, we will get into doing that once we actually have some money. But, um, you know, I, my understanding is that the, you know there's simply more more nutrients available to the plant, and we we augment it with with the Ramo, but you know at the same time there's like all the you know compounds that are in the soil that the plant can constantly feed on, and um, the goal is basically you know by giving the plant more more nutrients it can eat what it wants it'll just simply achieve its full genetic potential and hopefully that translates into more terpenes. Yeah, that, so that's are, that's what we do the way to go man terpenes are the way yep. to go I, I i totally agree with you uh you know right now in such a young age of legalization people are a good portion of the public all they know is thc and i use the example yeah. of uh, you probably wouldn't buy a bottle of wine based on alcohol percentage and at some point we'll of course we'll convince the rest of the uh the world about that uh but tell us about your master sure. grower mike Mike's been growing for about 12 years, um, you know, in the medical, the medical space. And, uh, yeah, he, uh, you know, he's as dedicated to the mission as I am. And, um, he's, he grows at his home in, um, in soil and, uh, you know, he calls it his hillbilly greenhouse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We're a good team. We, uh, we work well together. He's, uh, he's in there helping the trimmers right now. And, uh, we sort of, uh, you know, we sort of joke, we're like the movie twins cause Mike, Mike's giant. And okay. I'm I'm quite small, so yeah, we're we're a fun, we're a fun uh, fun couple. Yeah, if I left awesome. here, I would definitely I would definitely take Mike with me. Like he's a good good teammate, and real asset to the to the operation. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, I, I look forward yeah. to the day when we can travel again freely and uh, getting out to check out the operation. But let's talk about uh, some of the cultivars uh, that are listed. If uh, people are watching on screen, uh, first let's talk about yeah. comatose. Kush, what was the growing process like and how did this turn out? Uh, why did you guys grow this? Uh, well, I grew, uh, I grew comatose Kush mostly, uh, like we, we got, uh, we got 37 live cultivars from, uh, from, a, a, an ACM PR grow, uh, an investor in the company that we, uh, we brought into our license system under, under the 10 sub two, but, uh, coming from an ACM and PR grow, I had no, uh, COAs certificates of analysis. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know what the genetic potential was of that plant. Um, you know, we have, we've had some that we've tested that came in at 9%. They're just a, just a bad pheno. Mm -hmm. So I really, I really had to roll the dice and, um, I chose comatose Kush, uh, basically going on, going on, you know, leafly and these, these sites 
trying to assess uh, you know, the genetics, trying to get, get an idea of what the range is. Um, I trusted the source, but when they don't test, you know, you're in uncharted territory. Sure. So I just, I literally just chose it because uh, it looked like, uh, you know, it looked like it would have high THC and uh, it was a good name, comatose Kush. And um, thank, thank goodness it delivers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I basically, I, I rolled the dice. I rolled, I, I made an, I made an educated bet. The plants yeah. were healthy. Um, because, you know, we were assessing what genetics to, to, to take clones from. And I was basically sure. in a room of 39 plants trying to make the decision. It's like, what do I grow? And like, Mike's like, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> like, thanks, They'll Mike. Anything, you know? right? thanks. Yeah. yeah, it's like, whatever we, if we do, whatever you decide, that's what we do. And uh, so I, I went through a list of all of the ones we had. And yeah, thank goodness I, uh, I chose, I, ch you know, I chose wisely or right. I chose luckily. Yeah, exactly. And we're going to get into where people can uh, find uh, uh, your cultivars in a bit. But Red Congolese, uh, this is actually one I don't think I've actually tried. Uh, so tell me about Red Congolese, why you guys went with that, and how did that turn out? <laughs> well, um, I'm probably going to get in trouble for this. But um, so we have a, we have a, 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 Excel, a Google Sheet spreadsheet right. of all of our cultivars. And I sent it to a, to a friend of mine that I, I trust, trust with my life. And I said, what do you, uh, what do you think of these? What do you think I should grow? And she said, uh, she said, red, you have a red Congolese. That's my favorite. So, uh, just like that, I decided to grow red Congolese for a girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it's her favorite. Reason. And, uh, yeah, I, that was my, that was my, my, of the other two, I, the other two I was pretty confident with. But um, when someone that I really respect in the industry and uh, her, her opinion, her perspective um, says that it's her favorite, that was, uh, that was one that I, I, that was, that was one I grew from me. Okay. So way. tell us how it and went. Uh, what was the process like? Oh, well, Ray Congley is, is, uh, is of, of the three of them there. Um, it, it did not have the highest terpenes. Meat, meat breath had 2.7% terps, oh. but red Congolese uh, absolutely dominated the room with respect to the, to the smell. It has a, it has a distinct cheese and fruit smell. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just absolutely, it, it's delicious. It, it would be a close second. Like meat breath, I really love, but red Congolese, uh, it's just absolutely delicious to the nose. Like you, you almost want to spread it on cheese. Hmm. Um, we, we were very careful growing that. It, um, you know, I, I did research every all three of those cultivars once I decided to really sort of understand them. Um, you know, Ray Congolese has it has the tendency, according to the internet, to a hermaphrodite. So that was one we really had to keep an eye on. Uh, we we grew in the room. If you if you check the hitter on my Twitter profile, I've got like a, a, a wide angle of the of the grow room. But we had two tables of of uh, Ray Congolese, and then two tables of Meat Breath, and then two tables of Comatose Kush in the same room. And, uh, you know, then we had this one that's in, the, you know, the, the Congo was gonna, gonna hermaphrodite. So, you know, like I personally, and like, don't forget, this is a, this is a make or break for the company crop. Right. If it fails, we're dead. We're bankrupt. We're bankrupt and everyone can go home. So, uh, yeah, I was in there a lot looking for hermaphrodites. I'm, I'm a professional, you know, dude hunter. I, mm -hmm. I know what to look for. And I study photos of, uh, of uh, male, you know, male plants looking for how, how plants hermaphrodite. I basically moonlight as a plant scientist, really trying to study and understand the uh, the behavior of the plants. Um, it grows very sl slow and bushy. So um, if you look at that photo of our room, basically we've got the short bushy ones, even though it's a, you know, a pure sativa, it's uh, it's short and bushy. And the comatose kush being an 80% indica uh, grows tall. Right. So we had, we had, uh, you know, we had a six week veg to allow the, the Congolese to sort of catch up to the other plants. So we got, we got coma at the one side of the room, just giant plants and it grows very tall and dense. And then we've got uh, Congolese at the, at, the, at the start of the room, you know, very short and bushy. Um, we got about three pounds per light on Congolese. So of all of the three, uh, it was uh, the highest yielding by far. The other two were like 2.1, 2.2 pounds per light. The Congo got, got three. Wow. Holy moly. So uh, uh... yeah. Yeah. yeah we we pushed them hard so you know like we really like we 
lot of light, a lot of food, like right, you know, we were pushing them right as hard as we could, we could, because, you know, we wanted a good crop. And uh, yeah, we're, we're going to sell that one again uh, for, for 420. That's a, that's like a special one now. Yeah, no doubt. That's beautiful. Uh, meat breath. Let's talk a little bit about that. I, I, I have had that. Uh, it has a really distinct taste. I, I'm really looking forward to trying a really good meat breath. I think the one that I did try was not the greatest, so I'm looking forward to it. But, man, the the, the flavor, the smell, the taste is just so unique with that. Yeah, you know, I, I had uh, Jeff and Braun from BC Craft Supply, uh, you know, two, two legacy participants in the market, uh, come through my place and they, they smell my weed. And, like, these guys smell weed all day, every day for micros all across BC. And uh, they're like, they like looked, they smelt it and they like looked at me. It's like, I've never smelt anything so rich. And uh, so I hope you try ours. It's uh, it's very good. It's It's got an amazing nose, 2.7% terps on nice. that one. Um, or the, I mean, the, the crop that we, that we grew at 23.8% THC. Um, the reason I grew that was because it was popular in the Alberta black market. Mm -hmm. um, and as you know, Alberta is a giant, uh, a giant cannabis market. They really got retail right. You know, kudos to the AGLC for that. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, ultimately, I want to grow what, uh, you know, uh, legacy, legacy, you know, purchasers of cannabis want to consume. Mm -hmm. But better, and that's why do I chose it better, it. though. Yeah, yeah, definitely do it better. Yeah, we're all, you know, we're pesticide free. We're, uh, you know. We, we passed all of our microbials, so we're definitely selling a, a, an amazing, delicious uh, product that, um, you know, that they can also have peace of mind consuming. It's, uh, you know, it's safe and clean. Well, that's so, yeah. for a lot of people, um, you know, the, the, a lot of people that are maybe not very experienced with cannabis, that's their number one concern, and that should be, is the, yeah. the safety and, yeah. the, you know, the, of the product. They know... Uh, what is not more importantly, they know what is not yeah. in there, uh, you know, and the, and the good yeah. stuff that is there. So yeah. you, you mentioned trying your stuff. I can't wait to. So tell us where it is right now. Where can people find it across the country and, and where will it be in the future? Yeah, across the country. It's available today from the shelter uh, market, mm -hmm. which is their uh, shelter. Uh, it's their medical channel. So uh, it literally took me three minutes to get a prescription through Apollo Clinics. Um, you know, for, you know, have a hard time sleeping sure. and, um, and then, uh, they'll forward your, uh, your prescription to, you can tell them to sign to, to shelter market and, um, yeah. And then sign up with shelter. It took like five minutes. You just sort of click through the process, give your name and all that. And yeah, then you can buy, uh, buy it on, on their, their online store. It's quite easy. Um, we, uh, we have, uh, our product has been approved in uh, BC. We're just waiting for a purchase order. And um, yeah, no other news at this at this point. I believe it's also for sale in, in uh, Saskatchewan. Okay, uh, and then down the road, uh, hopefully you'll be uh, you know busting into this uh, robust Alberta market. Uh, I mean, you know, as 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 big as the black market might have been in Alberta, the legal market is just taking over with the amount of stores that we have available. So oh, yeah. obviously, that's a place that you're going to try to get into shortly. I'd imagine. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, because we're newly licensed, um, we, we do have a standard processing license, but, um, you know, it, Health Canada takes uh, forever to issue a, a sales authorization on your processing license, which is a, you know, a real tragedy for a lot of small producers. Sure. So in the meantime, we're selling through through uh, through Shelter. They they um, they package and distribute for us. And they do a great job. Our stuff's, you know, in glass and it's lovely and um, they sell it to their medical customers. And they're, uh, yeah, they're getting us into BC and, uh, you know, Alberta is in the future. Um, if, if, you know, if they're not talking to them now, I'd be surprised, but there's nothing, nothing to report as of yet because, uh, you know, we're new. There is a bit of a bit of an onboarding process and getting, you know, new SKUs mm -hmm. registered with the provinces and, uh, you know, they're all, they're all working hard. So, uh, just kind of give it a little bit of time and I'm confident it will be available in Alberta at some point. Looking forward to it. Uh, what was this week like? I know you guys were busy harvesting. Uh, what was it like for you? Uh, yeah, harvesting. Uh, it's a, it's it's a much better harvest than last time. Last time it was just Mike and I, and uh, Mike's neighbor came in to help us, and we were basically on our feet harvesting for about seventy two hours. I was on my feet uh, harvesting a, a room, uh, you know, a 
a full room, 278 plants, and we chop them all up and put them on uh, galvanized uh, galvanized steel, sort of these, these cylinders that, that we make out of, out of fencing. Um, this week, we, uh, yeah, we, we hired a crew. So we have a, we had a 14 person crew in, um, and we were doing a, we we're actually doing a wet trim this time. So because we grew in soil, it's uh, soil is a real finicky beast. It's uh, a lot harder to control your pH than, um, than working with cocoa. A cocoa, you can just flush it. If you have a pH imbalance or something, you just flush it and just literally flush everything out of it and then just put in, you know, reset. But with soil, you know, we, uh, you know, it's our first time growing in soil. So we are constantly figuring out this pH issue. And, you know, as a result, we've got some yellow, yellow leaves. There's nothing wrong with that. Our, the plants are actually caked in trichomes. Our trichome coverage is far superior than to our first crop, which is like, you know, awesome. But, um, you know, we're, we're paranoid about mold forming. Uh, we, we like passing our microbials. We want to keep doing passing our microbials. So um, in the interest of paranoia, we decided to, to trim, trim all the sort of, you know, yellow, yellow leaves off um, at harvest. So um, yeah, it's, it's been, uh, it's been a lot easier than last time. I'll tell you that. And uh, yeah, we got, we got two, two drying rooms. We didn't have drying rooms before we dried in the vault. Um, <laughs> it was, it was quite, uh, the first harvest was quite, uh, quite a challenge. Wow. And uh, this, uh, unfortunately, this is public information because Health Canada, where Health Canada was not happy about that. And they, they make, they make their, their inspection of, of our, uh, of our facility of public information. But uh, now we've got two beautiful drying rooms built out and uh, I'm happy to report they're maintaining their temperature and humidity perfectly. So we do a nice, a nice slow dry and um, that'd be going over the next nine days. And then we'll have a trim crew back just to basically help help polish and take it off the bone. Yeah, that's so it's, it's it's been a lot easier, much easier. And uh, you know, I could do podcasts and and uh, <laughs> attend to the other other duties. No doubt, that process of drying, curing is you know sometimes rushed by people, and and then you can tell uh, in the end result when they get it. What is your favorite part? Do you have a favorite part of the growing process other than when it's finished and you can relax? But you know. During the whole thing, do you have a favorite part? Uh, so uh, you know, our our tables are pretty close together. So I tend to be the, uh, the watering person. Um, so you know, basically, Mike Mike does everything else, and I I uh, I go in there and I water. Mm -hmm. I like having a podcast on, just rolling up and down the aisles, giving them all their six seconds of water. It's kind of like a nice little zen zen you know hour for me in the day. And uh, you know, I have I take phone calls while I'm in there, just shooting the shit. And, uh, you know, while I'm watering, but I would say my favorite thing is, um, is, uh, defoliating. Mm. I, I don't know why, but it's like, it's incredibly satisfying. Just, uh, you know, you walk up to the canopy and the canopy is just full of darkness. And, um, it's, it's almost like doing like, like scratch and you're like doing like lottery scratching, you're scratching off the letters and you, you basically need to scratch them all off. <laughs> but as you walk up to this, this, you know, dense, dense canopy and you start pulling off fan leaves. And you're just going in there, just like literally just doing this, like da 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 da. It's neat watching the light start coming through. And right. um, I don't know why, but it's it's just like I like pulling off fan leaves. There you go. Well, it's, 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 uh, <laughs> it's probably uh, you know you're you're continually doing it, so it kind of almost yeah, it's just repetitive, yeah. right? You get a, you get a podcast going. You're just yeah. in the in the zone. You're just it's you're just pulling pulling fan leaves off, and the light comes through. And at the end, it's just beautiful you know beautiful you know all lollipop plants and you can see through it I, I got some videos on my on my twitter and uh that's my favorite part i um, i uh most of my work is focused on the regulatory side sure and uh, i do not i do not enjoy that i enjoy being in the garden yeah i think most <laughs> of us would uh, what are your thoughts as uh, we look overall in canada we just passed the second year of legalization into season three as i call it what have you thought of the yeah. past couple of years Ah, uh, well, you know, I, for, I mean, for me, it's, it's just been a struggle. So, uh, you know, it's, I mean, it's been tough for, for, for us, you know, getting licensed and just seeing other companies, uh, you know, growing up and failing, you know, I've enjoyed that the regulations are sort of, especially with COVID, um, they have, they are getting easier. I like that the recreational market has expanded, you know, radically over the past two years. You know, retailers everywhere. I think it's great. Yeah, 
yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy to see cannabis finally, uh, now that I appreciate the struggle that a lot of people have gone through sure. to get to this point, you know, as a, you know, as a relative newcomer to the industry. Um, yeah, I, I'm really happy with where we are and, uh, yeah, I think that's uh, it, it's it's such a good description. You you can be happy that we're yeah. you know able to have legalization, but also yeah. you know, really appreciate the struggle that it's been. So yeah. let's uh, ask you this then: What do you think is the next big thing in cannabis? Is there something that you think is about to explode here in Canada? Uh, <clears throat> in terms of what's new, uh, you know, in uh, in the provinces that are creating farm gate. I think that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're we're obviously a big, you know, as a small craft producer, we are excited the idea of having Farmgate and being able to sell, uh, especially because we have a processing license, be able to sell directly to uh, you know to our customers. Mm -hmm. In terms of the biggest thing, I would say uh, cannabis tourism, uh, you know, will be the next the next wave. Um, just like how you go to a winery and you have a beautiful. You know, a beautiful experience. You know, you're gonna have your wedding at a winery. You're gonna go there and have food. Mm -hmm. um, that would be that would be my bet. That's right. I bet. You know, will be the next the next wave. And um, yeah, I, I think that's uh, that'd be a huge opportunity for for a lot of smaller players. I know uh, this yesterday was mentioned uh, another podcast I did. Um, sort of the uh, the services sector and just using cannabis. Um, you know, for spas and things like that, where you can go to a spa and you know, have a, you know, have a have a have a THC cream, you know, applied to your back, and you know, you know, consume other substances while you're on site. So, sort of building services around cannabis, not just you know, in production and processing, but uh, uh, you know, doing things with them. Well, yeah. and that 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 whole farm gate uh, plays right into that. If you know, if people can come and tour your facility and then grab something on the way yeah. out. That's the yeah. ideal thing uh, to be able to do. So I, I think can of tourism yeah. uh, should be a no brainer. The amount of jobs it's going to create. Now, once we can get yeah. kind of tourism back on track, right? We have to we have to play by the rules of COVID right now. Yeah. But this gives us yeah. time to plan it. I, I think this should be a, something that should be being talked about a lot uh, when it comes to regulations yeah. right now. Absolutely. Yeah. This is something. Uh, the tourism aspect is something I think about a lot, and how to really. Um, you know, how to really connect cannabis with the consumer. Like right now, the, uh, you know, there is a large cannabis market, but it doesn't include a lot of people that consume mm -hmm. alcohol. Like my, my, my parents, my, my extended family, none of them consume cannabis. They all drink wine frequently. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I tell them, it's like, you know, have an edible. Like you just you can have this 10 milligram edible and have the same experience of like two glasses of wine. And I think, uh, I think, you know, really opening up tourism and demystifying the plant, uh, you know, re there's still stigma associated with cannabis. It's sure. you know, irrational. It's irrational. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I think that um, I think that really exposing people to the beauty of the cannabis plant and having a, a, a retail experience as well at your facility that closely uh, uh, marries cultivation with, uh, you know, the, the end product. Um, I think there's a real opportunity there. A hundred percent. I, you know, education, right? Normalize, talk about it. The more you educate, yeah. the more you, you uh, let people know it's more than just smoking a joint. There's so many other things, the more oh, yeah. people you bring even, into the fold. Yeah. Even if you don't consume cannabis, you know, just, just the plant is just so unique and the smells on the plant. And, uh, you know, I think if a lot of people could experience, the, the you're know, walking into a grow room and the terpenes hitting you it's like nothing you've ever experienced like if you go to a garden center it's always like fresh air and right. you feel good you feel good being in that environment it's just like you know the the beautiful smells it's like that times 10 with cannabis and just the terps really like if we if we had a grow with red congolies and people smelt that we we we'd get cannabis consumers every single one of them because they'd smell it and be like holy shit this smells delicious i want to consume that yeah, it's good stuff. <laughs> I well, want to taste it. Yeah, this has been uh, this has been a lot of fun, man. Thank you so much for uh, joining me on the program this week and uh, telling your backstory and and what you guys got going in the future at Gnome Star Craft Cannabis. Uh, thank you so much, man. No problem. Thank you for having me. This 
is the Cannabis 101 podcast, your guide through the legalization and consumption of cannabis in Canada and beyond. Really enjoyed uh, that conversation with Earl Oliver from Gnome Star Craft Cannabis. We will have one hitters with Earl a little bit later on in the week as we explore his uh, cannabis history and get to know him a little bit more. Uh, You can find that at the Cannabis101podcast.ca where you can also subscribe to the Weed Weekly. Uh, A lot of fun. Uh, As mentioned, we will have one hitters uh, with him later on, uh, either Friday or Saturday. All right, let's dive into our cannabis character this week. You got a joint? Uh, no, not on me, man. <laughs> It'd be a lot cooler if you did. Time now for Cannabis Characters. Dopest dope I've ever smoked. Celebrating the best from fictional 420 film. Hey, I am your stoner. <laughs> and beyond. Yeah, be careful with that, man. Uh, is it heavy stuff, man? <laughs> All right, the character we're going with this week, and if you're watching, the reveal is Towley (laughs) from South Park, voiced by Vernon Chapman. And uh, he is a talking towel that was genetically engineered to make people as dry as they needed to, depending on their wants. He showed up in season five, he loves getting high, and he even has his own theme song when he gets high. All right, so I shouldn't say his own. He stole that clearly from Popeye. But weed is his spinach. Uh, He has been to rehab. He's worked at a cannabis dispensary. And he also posed as a cannabis inspector. And uh, this is the clip that we're going to see or we're going to hear now. Yes, I'm with the state testing board. Is this uh, Integrity Farms? Name's right there on the sign. Come on back. So, with this vesting device, I can check not only the THC levels in your product, but also detect any impurities and give you a final score based on overall chemical makeup. Yep, that's good shit. Now, let me test the levels in your organic house blend. Yep, that's good shit. Now, what about the Tegrity Jungle Bud? Let's test it out. Whoa. Yeah? Whoa. Yeah? I don't know what Tegrity is, but that is some good shit. All right. All right, indeed. Uh, There's Tally from South Park. Uh, I I did watch South Park uh, quite early on. I don't know. I I definitely know I didn't make it to season five. Uh, But, uh, man, that that character makes me want to dive back in and see what Cartman and the boys and girls are up to. What's your favorite towel-y moment, if you have one, or maybe favorite moment from South Park, or your favorite uh, South Park character, rather, in uh, general? Uh, If you have one, uh, please, indeed, uh, let me know. And that's uh, Towley. Our... Cannabis character today, voiced by Vernon Chapman from South Park. What's that strain? Let's find out with Chris Ionson, Nova Cannabis store manager and educator. Chris Ionson of Nova Cannabis, the manager on Jasper Ave, joining me as per usual for What's That Strain. We're getting close to Halloween. I love it, and I'll be sad when Halloween is over and I don't get to see scary things. Are you excited <laughs> about this weekend? And you know, is, the, is Halloween usually a big thing in the cannabis industry? 
Uh, I mean, yeah, for sure. It's, we try to make uh, have some fun with it. Sure. Uh, yeah, I know. Like um, last year, we uh, the White Ave store. We really did it up real nice. We had a lot of spooky things. The my dad Jasper Ave store this year. Uh, we did I like it, up. it. Yeah, right. It looked pretty pretty solid in there. We got that spooky fence with the the arms and you know cobwebs everywhere. And uh, Night of the Living Dead is still one of my the original is still one of my favorites. And anytime I see hands coming out, I think <laughs> Night of the Living Dead. So I think you guys have done it up right. And uh, I, I'm excited about uh, the strain that we're doing today, Royal Goddess, which is an indica dominant hybrid. And this is from Royal City, and that is the rec brand of Can TX Life Sciences. So maybe start us off with a little bit about them. Yeah, totally, Dean. So Can TX Life, Science, Life Sciences, uh, they're a privately owned cannabis producer um, with exceptional biotechnology and horticultural capabilities. Uh, the company is run by CEO and president uh, and co-founder uh, Mike Abbott. And Mike is a former VP of sales for a, a major Canadian brewery for many years. And uh, he had extensive uh, experience with um, regulatory compliance as well. So kind of a really good fit sure. for cannabis. We're seeing a lot of that. Uh, a lot yeah. of uh, liquor guys are getting into cannabis. I, I think that's great, though. It's, yeah, they kind of know the lay of the land a little bit as far as dealing with government and things. And certainly there's a lot of that in cannabis. Yeah, definitely, for sure. Um, I think, too, it's it, it's it's kind of like right now cannabis is a little bit like tobacco, <laughs> where I'd like to see us a little bit more in the in the liquor uh, Yeah, on area. an equal playing field. Yeah, for sure. So hopefully we get there. Uh, now, the company was founded in uh, 2013 uh, by Mike Abbott and Buck Young. Mm -hmm. uh, they co-founded the company together, and Buck Young is currently their director. Uh, and it was in Guelph, Ontario, where they started this. And uh, they operate a 30,000-square-foot facility uh, just south of Guelph, um, under both a standard cultivation and standard processing authorization from Health Canada. Which is uh, important that they, they have both of those because it means they're able to do, do different things and not just grow. Yeah, that's right. Uh, big time. They, uh, a big part of their, uh, you know, their, their game there is uh, uh, micropropagations. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, they have a proprietary system called uh, Steady Stem Solutions. And uh, it's all it's all about uh, transforming how cannabis is propagated, grown, and harvested, and uh, it combines the the power of biotechnology with the art of cannabis cultivation to produce uh, premium medicinal and rec products at a greater scale and consistency than ever before. Hmm. And it's uh, it's all about like uh, they take tissues from carefully selected uh, cannabis plants and they're regenerated into plantlets. Uh, using my, the micro propagation technology, and, uh, and this ensures clean and consistent inputs uh, for commercial production. So, kind of in, in layman's terms, uh, they're they're kind of taking flaws out of the plant, and you know, giving you the best of the best of what yeah. that, what that offers. And listen, I'm definitely the farthest thing from being an expert, but it sounds like they're just making your your cannabis, you know, maybe getting rid of some of the impurities. Yeah, the impurities, uh, as it's been bred over the years too, right. uh, with this you know micropropagation, they're taking it back to like the original genetics of of the strain. Right. Uh, so, uh, very exciting. We're seeing this. Uh, a couple of other companies are doing it too. It's it's pretty neat. And and I mean, why why not? Let's get science and cannabis yeah. together in a room. Let's see what happens. Yeah, if we can produce better, um, you know, whether it's healthier cannabis or, or tastier or, you know, better medicinally for, for mm -hmm. some person, you know, getting the, the right stuff to those people, then, then I'm uh, all for this. And I'm all for for partnerships as well. And uh, they've got one with Weed MD. Yeah, that's right. Uh, in, in July of 2020, it was announced that uh, Weed MD, and that's uh, Colored Cannabis and the Starseed brand. Uh, they partner up to uh, to add new cultivars to uh, to their genetic seed bank and expand the life cycle on their existing prized cannabis cultivars. Wow! And that's using uh, cutting edge technology with the uh, the steady uh, steady stem solutions. Uh, so it's cool to see. Uh, I guess like a I have a big player like Weed MD. Uh, yeah. You know, getting involved with the the micro propagation stuff too, because uh, they do have some really awesome strains. And so, uh, cultivars. Pardon me. Why why wouldn't you want to you know take your your Pedro Sweet Sativa you know mm -hmm. back to you know its early days kind of thing. So we kind of you know we hear you know you see sometimes that uh, pre ninety eight Baba Kush. You know, you're you're thinking about like that cannabis, what it was at one point, yeah. and you know we've all kind of dreamt about having like that pure sativa or pure indica and everything, but this is kind of like 
going back in time a little bit and, and seeing what the plant was like originally almost. It's so exciting. Yeah, it is. It is uh, all kinds of new stuff that we're seeing. Uh, so I just I feel like you know, every week there's there's something some yeah. new news uh, happening. There's you know all kinds and, of partnerships and and that's the way it should be, right? You know that's how we move this industry forward. Is you know we we all help pull together, we partner together, we produce together, we yeah. experiment together with different things, and you know that's how we get it to where we need to go. So bravo on the uh, the partnerships and uh, the different collaborations that are uh, that are going on out there now when we talk about the history of royal goddess it's really really interesting and you know i love lineage so i love backstories and how things came out and there are some amazing strains in this lineage yeah, that's right, Dean. Uh, it's um, it's Godbud uh, crossed with Applejack. <laughs> yeah, and so with with the Godbud, we have uh, a three way cross of God crossed with Hawaii crossed with Purple Skunk. Wow, um, my mouth is watering. Yeah, for sure. I'm a big fan of Godbuds, uh, and then uh, Applejack, uh, really cool one. Two legendary strain uh, cultivars in there. It's uh, Jack Herrera crossed with the White Widow. Uh, for the Applejack, so sign me up for that. Yeah, it's it's really nice, and uh, and it, you know it, the Royal Goddess was selected from Royal City uh, for its unique kind of sweet apple aroma, um, also its indica dominant uh, features that uh, you know are real soothing on the body, um, and it's also uh, known to have uh, like higher terpene percentage. They were they were saying uh, mm. a boasting of as high as one point six percent terpenes. Wow, uh, with the Royal Goddess. That is very, very impressive. Almost as impressive as how big the bud is. Uh, for, for those lucky enough to be watching on our YouTube channel or uh, social medias, uh, stra- our channels rather, look how big that thing is. Like that's like that looks like like the Z- Led Zeppelin joint that uh, <laughs> Cheech and Chong had rolled into everything. Like I can't. When I got this, you know, I was like, uh, you know, you, you kind of sh- do the shake test when you get it or whatever. I was like, well. <laughs> Sounds, sounds like it's going to be pretty thick in here. <laughs> it was hard getting it out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, dude. Um, when you showed it to me, I, had, I struggled to, to pull it out there. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, it's nice to see, though, and it's a really nicely trimmed bud, too. Uh, uh, and, and with the Royal City Cannabis, uh, uh, they, they have a really nice gro- uh, growing process. They grow indoor uh, to maturity. They hang dry and mm-hmm. hand process. Uh, to ensure that the uh, the passion of their growers translates into the the quality of their cannabis, and uh, they also do a multi week cure. Which anytime I hear that you know a, a provider is doing a cure, I, everyone needs to be doing that. I uh, don't skip that process. Yeah, that's such an important uh, um, part of the process because you get through all of that work, mm-hmm. and if you don't do it right in that step, all that work is. Yeah, you're gonna you know you're, you're gonna lose out on this, so much this, your flavor profiles, your terpene. Uh, Content, uh, yeah, cure your stuff. It's very important, guys. Uh, and then they also, it's their stuff's packaged by hand, uh, and it comes with a you know Bovita pack inside too. So like, uh, uh, you know, props to the Royal City. I mean, it's the first time they're pretty new here to Alberta. They've mm-hmm. been in uh, other provinces, but uh, I, I've been pleased with it so far. You know what it remind? It reminds me of remember when the the whatever brontosaurus burger fred flintstone got in the opening credits like yeah. how big it was yeah. that's how big this bud is it's like the flintstone <laughs> burger of uh the one that makes the car uh, tip? yeah the car tipper yeah the car <laughs> tipper uh okay so that's an incredible lineage and it makes me really want to go out and get some god bud and some applejack as well so i'm going to really enjoy this uh, the website we should tell you is www.can tx.com uh, that is for the uh, the medicinal side it has a lot of good medicinal information so if you are looking for some information there's some really good stuff there uh, and then royal city's website is on the way yeah hopefully hopefully we see their website soon uh, i can't can't see it you know, be too too far off now okay so uh as we take another look at this uh 17.5 percent thc we'll tell you uh, in a little bit where that kind of Fits on the scale, but what about the name? Um, is this just kind of a nod to what they got going on with their brand and maybe kind of helps the brand out as well as this uh, strain? That's what I think, Dean. Uh, you know, I 
did, did some research, tried to find some some other royal goddess, tried to see you know um, you know any kind of breeders that were producing royal goddess. Uh, I think that this is a proprietary one that they they brought together, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and I think it has to do with the, the god bud in the name uh, and royal royal city cannabis. So uh, kind of a, a shout out to their brand. Sure. If anybody does know, uh, please reach out to us and yeah. and let us know uh, by all means. Okay, when we take a look at this and uh, people are seeing it. Uh, on the screen, you can see there's the uh, the tub, uh, you know, and, and I can't complain about the size of the package because the bud barely fit in it. So it's perfect. Uh, you know, I, I think those size of uh, packages are, are pretty good for the uh, for the size of the cannabis that you're getting. No need to be any bigger than that. Yeah, yeah, I agree, Dean. I think that's a, a good size for a 3.5 gram. I like their logo, too. I like that bold uh, lettering on there and uh, very, very cool. Yeah. Um, positive is there's a Boveda pack, as you mentioned. Negative, there's a lip. Yeah. Want to sure. explain why we don't like lips in our packages? Yeah, for sure, Dean. It's uh, It has to do with, you know, when your bud's in there, you're going to, some of your trichomes, uh, some of your pistols, some of the good stuff that you want to be putting into your pipe and your joint are going to get caught into your packaging. Uh, when you got a lip, it's just a little bit trickier to get that out. Whenever mm-hmm. I finish a, a jar of my cannabis, uh, I have a little brush on my tray yeah. that I'll, I'll sweep it all out into my pile and, and make sure that that goes into my lungs. There you go. <laughs> all right, so as for the look, and we'll switch over to the close-up of this now, the overhead, and uh, man, and it's big and beautiful. <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, definitely uh, larger buds. The uh, the three point five I've got. I didn't have a bud as big as yours, <laughs> but I had uh, uh, two really good size buds. Uh, it was just nice to see. Uh, the trim job is really nice too. There's yeah. n- um, nothing in there that you you don't need. It's all it's all good smoking stuff in there. Uh, you know, minus a stem to a bud of that size. But yeah, uh, leaf wise, you and know, colors. Yeah, the colors are really nice, uh, real nice light green, uh, light brown pistols, uh, it's real fresh looking too, uh, mm-hmm. it's got a nice squeeze to it, uh, and a real solid trichome coverage uh, along the buds. Yeah, and as we mentioned, a really good uh, trim job, you can tell they, they took their time. Um, when we smelled it, uh, it's it's got some, you, you can kind of taste, smell the apple a little bit, but what else do you got in there? Yeah, so for me, um, it's it's spicy. It's spicy and apple, uh, kind of like a, a spicy fruit. Mm. Um, I got a little bit of floral in there too, uh, but mainly uh, mainly that spice and um, also a, a, a freshness to it as well. Uh, but the the spicy and the apple were I'd say the the two main. Yeah, and then that floral will be explained as we move into uh, the the terpenes as well, and uh, you know that's where it you know it comes in. Maybe it's not the strongest terpene, but uh, linalool is one of them, and that that is one of the the floral tastes. But uh, what else do you have for the terpene list? Yeah, so uh, the dominant terpene that we've got in in the royal goddess is is farnesine. Hmm. That's a that's a new one. Uh, I don't believe we've talked about that I one on the show. Yeah, it was when I was looking at the notes. I'm like, well, this is something I'm going to learn today. I'm liking yeah, it. Yeah, it's cool, right? Uh, and it, there's over a hundred terpenes that are out there too. So yep. it's, there's just a variety. But farnesine is is kind of uh, associated with apples. <laughs> Uh, and uh, obviously the apple jack, mm-hmm. uh, and and you can find farnesine in in the skin of green apples. So it's. Uh, Do you like? Are you a green apple guy? I, I like green apples. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm yeah. I'm a red apple guy. I'm sorry. I'm, you know, I'm <laughs> trying. I, I don't want to, uh, you know, upset the green apple fans. But I am a red apple guy. My wife uh, knows McGee. She loves uh, green apples. So it's too bad she's not here. She's missing out on probably what would be a great terpene for her. Yeah, totally. This would have been a good one to get <laughs> Nosy McGee on. Uh, yeah, so farnesine's the dominant terpene. Uh, then we got limonene, mm-hmm. and that's uh, kind of citrus kind of fruitiness as well. Uh, and then linalool is the third, and that's uh, kind of a floral lavender smell right. and aroma. Uh, and and caryophylline was listed in there too. I, I just want to mention that because I felt like I got a lot of caryophylline when I was smelling just the, the spice and stuff. But you know that can just be the the combination of yeah. of all the terps, or just the strength of uh, caryophylline to just reach over, come over the top rope with the rest of the terpenes <laughs> and be dominant, right? Like it's yeah. a, it, you know if caryophylline was strutting to the ring, it would be like Vince McMahon coming to the ring, right? It's got some. <laughs> boldness to it so and and you know spiciness does seem to a little bit of spice can go a long way if you're ever doing kind of any cooking yeah. so maybe that carry off lean does you know carry more than than what maybe the percentage is as far as uh, the smell and the taste right totally. because it is obviously very strong if you've ever smelled black pepper or 
any yeah. kind of cayenne pepper. Uh, okay, what about your experience? Um, what did you find with this particular one? So I, I found it to be a, a very smooth and enjoyable smoke. A uh, bit of a creeper. Kind of kind of creeped up for sure. Um, and it was kind of um, light but, but fun head effects. Like okay. no, nothing too buzzy. Uh, pretty chill in the, in the head, which I, I prefer that. I don't, some of these sativas get, get my head going a little bit sure. too much. Uh, and I had a major body buzz. It was, uh, it was nice. And, uh, I also thought the, uh, the burnout was pretty gradual. So, you know, at the end of my, my sesh coming out of it. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't, uh, you know, straight into nap mode, uh, which was, which was nice. Right. Right. Yeah. So I, I definitely enjoyed, uh, the Royal Goddess. All right. Well, just to let you know, this is what uh, I've got the uh, got gold member here that I'll be uh, <laughs> yeah. firing up a little bit. I love gold. <laughs> As do I, gold member. So yeah. big thanks, of course, to Jesse uh, Lavoy for uh, surprising me last week, and uh, I'm firing up the classic. At some point, uh, you and I will have to uh, get uh, dueling. We've already actually had a request from uh, uh, one of our uh, viewers uh, who uh, has the opportunity uh, to be able to watch this uh, program on his cable package. So uh, he has requested that we have a, uh, I think, but a, a dueling um, volcanoes is, uh, is how uh, Randy had put it. So big thanks to Randy for watching us on his uh, cable package, and we'll try to Try to accommodate uh, your request. Okay, so I've uh, filled up this uh, giant bag. Uh, so we found out that this is going to creep up on me a little bit at <laughs> yeah. some point. Uh, so while I'm tasting this out, uh, give me the three W's. Who, what, and when do we recommend this for? For sure, Dean. So uh, who it's good for? Uh, intermediate smokers and up. Uh, I don't think this is uh, you know, a good, good first, first cultivar cannabis to hit if you're just getting into it. Um, I think it's also good for anyone looking to relax and chill. Um, I definitely <laughs> enjoyed it in that in that sense. Um, what it's good for? It's good for the couch. Uh, really, like I said, getting your relax on. Uh, I really enjoyed it after work as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Long day of work. Uh, it was really nice uh, and really good for goofy movies. Oh, yeah, definitely. I don't know. Made me laugh a bunch. Maybe it was the movies. Maybe it was the cannabis. But maybe it was the combination. It could have been. It could have been a little bit of both. Yeah, but uh, definitely. Yeah, the the just putting your feet up. Really good for that. Uh, when it's good for, uh, definitely evening time. I I think uh, you know right after dinner was nice for me a couple of times. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you can start your day with it. Just you know, be prepared to have a very slow chill day right uh productivity might not be at an all-time high as this and and you might think you're getting some stuff and then it creeps up on you and you yeah. find yourself on the couch and of course we should point out everybody is different uh, with their cannabis use but these are just kind of general recommendations yeah. of the who this might be and and you know th this this could be one of those if you're at level one ready to take the next step and you know move up with this one but just just be prepared that you might be relaxing uh, a little bit more. Uh, okay, the uh, the taste test. Um, you know that that's you know you're talking about the caryophylline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, th that's definitely there. But um, there's some uh, you know I don't know if it's the sour apple or something, but there's definitely an apple fruit taste to this. Yeah, there there is. Uh, it was noticeable uh, for for me. What I got, I got spicy and sweet mm -hmm. uh, with some woodsy notes. Mm. Um, and with that spicy and sweet, it kind of reminded me of, of apples and cinnamon, almost kind of mixed together. Uh, reminded me of the cereal Apple Jacks. Uh, I guess that's why the right. the name Apple Jacks is in there. Uh, but yeah, it just totally reminded me of that cereal uh, on the sweetness. I get that. I'm, I totally get uh, that cinnamon. I like that cinnamon taste too. I've been using a little bit more cinnamon in, with some of my food. And I remember as a kid, me and my buddy were like cinnamon toast crazy. We would just <laughs> go for it. So it's, it's, and I, I don't know if I've tasted that a lot in a lot of different cannabis. So it's kind of nice yeah. to be in there, maybe a little bit different. Um, okay. So Royal Goddess, Indica Dominant uh, from Royal City, the rec brand of Can TX Life Sciences. Uh, I'm looking forward to some more stuff uh, that they have going on. So you can use Click and Collect to pick this up at uh, your friendly neighborhood cannabis store. And if you get in before Halloween, you could be scared as well with the uh, the spookiness going on. Um, you and I got a chance to go on a tour recently of a facility, and then you got to go on another tour <laughs> most recently as well. Uh, tell me about what it was like to visit Parkland Flower. 
Yeah, Dean. Yeah, last week uh, it was really, really cool. Um, I was fortunate enough to uh, to have my staff at my store. Um, we were able to book two separate dates so that you know we could have people running the store still. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, all my staff got to check it out, and uh, yeah, we got to tour Parkland Flower and see uh, all kinds of different scenarios, like uh, uh, their their flower side, their veg side, uh, where all the kids were, the you know, the nursery, yeah. and it was uh, really neat to see like a a sea can set up, and it, they were stacked, and there was uh, everything was like put together really nice um uh, it was kind of cool to see it was also delta nine uh, we've talked mm. about them how they had their um proprietary pot system that's right that's, yeah. what, that's what they have uh going there too uh using them at parkland so it was neat to see them in action yeah um really cool stuff and we actually we had a camera crew that was there with uh with global, oh, nice. global news and they were talking about uh you know uh because kylie Beaudry, the uh, the ceo of parkland flower she's um working with uh some people to try and get uh like tours of cannabis facilities yeah we need that uh available to the public uh like a like a, a winery in bc where you mm-hmm. can you can go tours check out the grapes and then you know hit the gift shop and and grab a case of uh, that's going to be happening in vino. bc yeah with cannabis, with cannabis yeah. right so um I'd be, it'd be cool to see that here in alberta you know take a tour see it and then you know oh yeah i'm gonna pick up some of that violator that i saw out. growing like that yeah. it's pretty cool yeah, I really enjoyed my conversation with Kylie when she was on this show, and, and we kind of talked about that idea. And, and that is how you get can of tourism going. There, there's so much more that we should and can be doing, and that's perfect. Letting people see behind the curtain a little bit, and you know, you're lucky we got you got to see kind of two different uh, setups. So you know, the beautiful setup at Atlas, and then a uh, really cool setup at Parkland. So um, the more we can educate people and let them to see what's happening, yeah, I think the more people will understand it a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, well said, Dean. It's uh, it's great to actually like be there in the moment, uh, be surrounded by those plants, the smell. Um, yeah, just, uh, it, it's my happy place. Yeah, it was awesome. So was this strain this week, Royal Goddess, Indica Dominant Hybrid from Royal City, the rec brand of CanTX, 17.5% THC. Use Click and Collect and find it at your local Nova store. I would, uh, I would advise going to Jasper Ave and visiting my good friend, Chris Ianson. Thanks, as always, for coming out and being our educator, Chris. Yeah, Dean, thanks for having me. This is the Cannabis 101 Podcast, your guide through the legalization and consumption of cannabis in Canada and beyond. And that's going to wrap things up for us on the episode 70, hour two version of the Cannabis 101 podcast. If you missed hour one with Malcolm LaBelle and David Wiley from Monday, check it out at the Cannabis 101 podcast.ca. And uh, certainly if you would like to uh, get in touch with the show, we would love to hear from you. uh, If you would like to join the program as a possible guest, or if you think you would make a great advertiser, we would hear love to hear from you as well. Really looking forward uh, to bringing on uh, a real our first big sponsor uh, next week. Uh, they're a, a company who has recently been on the show. They make a really cool vape product, and uh, if you've seen the movie Men in Black, you might know what I'm talking about. So anyway, get in touch with us if you'd like to, Cannabis101podcast at gmail.com if you'd like to be a guest or join the show as a partner. And for all my other shows, check out podcastalley.ca and you can uh, find other kinds of sports shows, uh, pop culture, and so much more. Now, this has been a show that uh, we have uh, loved to see the growth of it. It's continually growing, and we love that uh, you can now watch us as well as listen to us. So if you are listening, check out our YouTube channel, Cannabis 101 Podcast, and we'll also be streaming this show uh, throughout uh, social media as we go throughout the week. All right, uh, one more thing to do, and that is to bring you the marijuana song from the artist My Dead Dog. Big thanks to Earl Oliver of Gnome Star Craft Cannabis, 
uh, soon to be hitting shelves near you. And uh, of course, Chris Ianson, our educator on What's That Strain, the manager of Nova Cannabis, Jasper Ave. We're back at it on Monday with David Wiley and Malcolm LaBelle for episode 71. As we go, remember, it's not just about getting high. It's about getting healthy. Please.